Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about the best custom picture profile settings for current generation Sony cameras, in my opinion. Note I said current gen, as it looks like Sony's gonna be mixing things up with cameras going forward, thanks to what we're seeing in the new Sony a7S III. Unfortunately, until that happens, we're stuck with a lot of rough color on a lot of these Sony cameras. So, here's what we're going to do. First, I'm gonna be showing you the settings that I actually use out of the gate. Then we'll talk about why Sony cameras are just pretty much awful when it comes to color and capturing high quality video. And then finally, I'll explain why the settings I'm going with and recommending work and there's some really interesting stuff so it's going to be pretty fun but before we get into the settings that I use I do want to pay a couple bills and talk about the camera guides that I sell over at academy.dslrvideoshooter.com if you enjoy these free videos and want to support me and the channel definitely check out the guides I sell over there I just finished one for the a64 a65 and a6600 cameras but if you're not a Sony fan there are a ton of other camera guides and content over there. Okay, back to fixing color on Sony cameras. Let's go ahead and walk through my custom picture profile that I recommend in all of my guides and talk about quite a bit in those guides. So we're gonna start off by going into the menu system and we're going to go down to picture profiles. You can choose any picture profile to customize the following settings. We're gonna go over, down, and we're gonna change gamma to S-Log2. Next, we're gonna go down to color mode and change it to ITU709 matrix, and that's it. Okay, so I also usually go down and take the detail to negative seven because nobody likes in-camera sharpening. And if you wanna know why I'm going with these settings, continue watching because things are about to get nerdy. So let's first talk about those two settings we just changed, the gamma and the color mode. Let's start with gamma. Without getting too complicated, gamma controls contrast and brightness values. So where is black, where is white, where is middle gray, how contrasty is the image, etc. That's what these gamma settings change. As an example, here's the S-Log2 gamma setting next to the movie gamma setting. As you can see, S-Log2 has very little contrast or is very flat, while movie has a lot more contrast. Now let's talk about that second setting we change, the color mode. Color mode, as you might guess, controls color. Things like how saturated is the image, how saturated each color is within the image, where red, blue, and other colors are landing on a vector scope, and so on and so forth. This is what the color mode setting changes. Going back to my recommended settings, let's talk about why I chose this combination. I use S-Log2 because it gives you a lot of dynamic range to work with. Capturing your image with low contrast allows you to add contrast or move exposure around in post-production and still retain details in the highlights and shadows. Most of these Sony cameras don't play nice with S-Log3, so that's why I prefer S-Log2, at least for this current generation of Sony cameras. So why then am I using S-Log2 and ITU709 matrix as a combination as opposed to the traditional S-Log2 and S-Gamut that you'll usually see together in a picture profile? This is is where the plot thickens and things start to get very interesting. So there are two reasons I'm going with this combination. The first reason I'm using this particular combination instead of S-Gamut with S-Log2, which is normally what Sony has combined in their picture profiles, is that S-Gamut on most of these cameras is fake. That's right totally not real. For example, if you look up Sony's help guide for your camera and search for picture profiles, then scroll down to the bottom, you will find the following fine print, which states S-Gamut, S-Gamut 3 dot Cine, and S-Gamut 3 are color spaces exclusive to Sony. However, this camera's S-Gamut setting does not support the whole S-Gamut color space. It is a setting to achieve a color reproduction equivalent to S-Gamut. So Sony's S-Gamut on these cameras really isn't S-Gamut as a color mode. That is why often the same settings on a cinema camera look so much better and when you start to work with them, they don't tear apart like they do on these cameras. And that's because they're the real deal S-Gamut, not a color reproduction equivalent. The second reason I don't recommend S-Gamut or 
other color modes on these Sony cameras is that these cameras are 8-bit and they have a very low data rate. When you shoot S-Log2 with S-Gamut, you have very, very little saturation and color information. And when you combine that with 8-bit video and a very low data rate on a lot of these cameras, the results are awful in post-production. When you try to bring up saturation in post and alter your color, there's almost nothing there to work with and you start to get really nasty artifacts like banding, lots of blocking, and you'll notice areas of the image that should be neutral start to take on weird colors like magenta, cyan, and other colors. The ITU 709 matrix setting I'm using, however, brings up the saturation in camera. This way, when you hit record, you're capturing a lot more color information and saturation before it's written to a low data rate 8-bit file. And the color looks great because the ITU 709 matrix remaps the color correctly for use with S-Log2. For example, here is traditional S-Log2 with the S-Gamut color mode. If you try to correct the luminance or add contrast, the footage color looks awful, as Sony expects you to remap or correct the colors. You can do this with a LUT from Sony, but the image falls apart. However, if we use the custom settings I recommended, we get very good color right out of the camera. The saturation isn't too extreme, so we still have lots of room to grade our footage without issue, and we don't have to use LUTs or spend a ton of time correcting color shifts. So in my opinion, this setting gives you really good dynamic range and color out of camera. I think it's kind of the best option for color also out of the camera. It looks really good. And again, we're not destroying our footage by tweaking a ton of settings that are baking in a look. You know, it's not super, super saturated, but it's giving us enough color so when we sit down to edit our footage, we can actually do something with it and it doesn't look awful. So hopefully that gives you a couple things to think about when it comes to Sony picture profiles and customizing the settings. And hopefully all of this will go away in the next couple years as Sony hopefully starts to update the color and the video specs on these cameras. We gotta get 10-bit, we need higher data rates, and uh, away with all that funky fake gamut stuff that I talked about in this video. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.